Hey guys and girls, Bordnell back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about episode 2 of Free Body Problem. The episode is called Red Coast. Full spoilers from the start of this review. And this episode definitely starts to fill in some of the blanks when it comes to the sort of ideas the show's going to be looking at and how it's going to link everything and just some of the themes because in the very first scene of this episode it's like the fallout from the previous night and Sol is saying then the whole thing with the light with the sky flashing and the numbers appearing in the sky to Augusta was a deep fake so it had been faked by someone or other the powers of be some organization and that does make this story and the books and it's based on a very modern feeling story because that is so much in the attention at the moment and there's been like other stories that have focused on it so it makes me think it's a very modern set of novels I wasn't really sure how long ago the novels were and it's definitely confirmed later on because someone like sneaks in a cheeky anti-vax reference so that makes it very recent like the last few years but yeah they start playing with some of the those ideas I think it's a good episode, by the way. I think it's a better episode than the first episode overall. The reason is, is because they do start to fill out some of the characters. They do start to give them a little bit more personality than in the first episode. And I'm talking about the characters in the present, really, and... Things start flowing and you start getting a bit more intrigue to the mystery and the bigger picture. It's also a pretty wild episode because of the different areas it goes into and the different directions. There's a few different tones as well because there are some laugh out loud funny moments in the episode. But at the same time, there's also stuff which is meant to be a lot darker and more serious it gets further into the virtual reality stuff and some of that feels very like stylish and trippy and you can start to see the budget that they've put into this show so definitely overall I'm positive on this episode I can see how it is wrestling with a lot and how that may be a struggle to bring it all together and to get a coherent tone but it's possible maybe they're not that interested in getting a coherent tone I, although there's a lot of depth but that clearly comes from the novels in in many ways but it's just a very interesting watch because of that and I'm not really complaining because whereas I thought the first episode was a bit slow at times and it was a a bit dry and there's moments of this episode that feels like that but this episode did feel more entertaining and a bit more thrilling and like you're really getting into the meat of stuff but it starts playing with like the modern technology ideas because another thing is the I think his name's Dar the um the oh the um Benedict Wong character he approaches Augusta at one point and he says cuz she knows he's a cop investigating the the whole case but like he says if you if you come with me i can give you some answers and he shows her footage of talking to no one the previous night when she thought she was talking to the woman but he has history in the past with this stuff so he knows then the woman was appearing to her and that as far as augusta was concerned she was talking to this person and the person was real so that once again seems to be hinting at some deep face fake technologies it's just a case of how it's all going to line up with the other stuff and the same woman then appears to 
the Wong character, the detective, in the cemetery because he is visiting his dead wife's grave and she comes up to him pretending she's a regular person and and starts asking about his wife and says, you know, who she's there to visit, that kind of thing. So it seems like it might be a technique which is being used on him as well. The good thing now that we've settled down a little bit is like we can actually I can actually talk about the different bits in sections when it comes to characters because they have been a bit more paired off in this episode. So I'll talk about the stuff in China next because that's sort of mostly it with Augusta. Like she starts to have a bit of like a mental meltdown because things are in test intensifying with the numbers and she starts getting overload and she's worried it's going to cause disaster if her experiments go forward so she believes that it's being done to shut down the experiments or like something bad will happen to her and maybe other people so even though she's being honored by these elite like scholars she she does have a, a breakdown and, and demands hey I'm the head of the of this lab and I demand you shut this down you you must shut this down so that's another side to things but yeah in China the scientist Lin is continuing her experiments and she gets wind of a theory by an American scientist and the theory is that you can essentially use the sun to conduct these experiments to try and contact life on other planets. And the idea is that the sun has greater power and greater energy. So it's almost like literally what she's suggesting <laughs> is like firing like a laser beam into the sun, as is pointed out. So she's talking to a lower rank officer about this stuff and they bring it to the commander and the commander is just being the stereotypical like stern hard ass and douchebag and it really berates her because he he's getting mad because she's taking as long as she is because it's also pointed out that this theory may well work but it will take years and he says things like he's disappointed and he he says this would be too dangerous and too risky. And it's funny because he, he does have a point about the dangerous and too risky part because that does seem to be a bit of a theme in this episode. This old science fish, fiction t chestnut of, yeah, you're, you're caught up so much with can you do it and the possible benefits, but you don't feel... <laughs> you don't consider the consequences and that, that does come into play a bit when we get to the gameplay and the virtual reality later on so she shut down pretty much although she she does get a bit of leeway like at one point they're testing this and and it seems to go quite well but then there are negative effects and a couple more things with her is she gets to confront the woman who killed her father years back because we've moved forward to the seventies now, and China is a, is a very different place, certainly under a different regime. So there has been some changes, but it's still painting a, a very grim picture of the politics of the country because she confronts this woman who struck the final blow to kill her father and she's now a, in like a camp of her, her own so she's a prisoner and she's also a cripple like she's lost an arm or or a hand and it paints a very grim picture again and, and she has a very as I guess you would pessimistic view of the world so she notices who it is straight away and, and she refuses to 
apologize to repent to make amends because she's saying things like well who's going to make amends for me or who's going to repent so in some ways i think it's a strong scene and the context of the scene is then lynn can kind of see although this woman in the past definitely has been a monster and she acts like really aggressively in in the scene so maybe not much has changed I, she definitely has at least i think empathy for her and and her state and like does she really deserve this or just that can it, it's a, a really well played scene at, at times you get a lot across without really saying much dialogue like just the drama of the scene and some of the ideas is there I also quite enjoyed just going back to the scene with Lynn and with like the commander and the military these experiments is she she's trying to explain it and simplify these math sums that she's going to use for the science for them on like a traditional blackboard and that's quite a fun scene. It, it drags on a little bit, I would say, but like it, it is quite a fun scene. And that's where I'll give this story, whether it's credit to the book, probably more than this, but in this episode as well, I'll give them credit because they do make these math equations and, and the science of the show quite engaging and quite simple to follow like it doesn't get too bogged down and too if you're a bit of a novice to this stuff um i i think this is why it's satisfying this sort of show mixing up genres and mixing genres with like science fit with well not science but more meaty political stuff as well and more more a little bit of drama as well sprinkled in so it's a decent mix overall, I would say. <clears throat> but, yeah, that was another decent scene. And we build to, like, the big climax and cliffhanger of the episode because she also sees this fellow American. We get a small scene with him. His name's Mike. I didn't really like the actor playing this guy and I, d I didn't really think much of the character even though he's meant to be quite sympathetic in the scene. He, he just came off as a bit obnoxious for me. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're... I'm assuming we're going to see more of him but she, she, he knew she was there from the military and so she was... He, sorry, he was very suspicious of her. And was like, no, these experiments are not worth it. They're going to impact on the environment negatively. And so he's a, a pro-nature activist. And that's his his whole viewpoint. And is very cynical of this. And they, draw, they form up a bit of a, a rapport. Form up. I, I don't know where I got that expression from. But there's a little bit of a of a bond and they strike up in the scene and she says to him I will try and stop it I'll try and talk them out of it because this is definitely a character who is sympathetic from the start so and she's she's got rigid beliefs in in any case and they've not really been compromised up to this point so she does assure him she'll try and stop them that doesn't go down too well but in the current, the detective seemed to know this Mike character. So the big dramatic end of the episode, which I think is a great ending, and it seems to have touches of Lost as well. It seems like Lost was an inspiration for this computer monitor and the texts that pop up and just how cryptic it is definitely similar sort of look so she gets this weird cryptic message from the computer like on the monitor and it's almost saying if you if you press that button if you type that button type that button sorry i'm all over the shop but if you press the button again very lost if you press it then you'll get answers, I can give you answers, and 
I can help you save the world is how it's phrased, which again is very computer game feeling because once we get into the levels of the computer game, there's a lot of like world saving which goes into it, which makes sense when you think about modern computer games. So that's the big cliffhanger, and I, I, I enjoyed how the actress sells this, like her pauses, dramatic pauses, and should I press the button? And of course she does press it, and that's it, we fade to black. So it's a really strong end to the episode, and has you intrigued for the next one. And she does a good job in the scene, and I don't mind them borrowing a little bit from Lost for it, because it made sense. So it seems pretty obvious then probably she's even either been contacted by aliens life from another planet or then it's something to do with the virtual reality or like a video game or or something i guess in some ways it m may amount to the same because maybe that's the idea of this video game that we keep seeing the levels to but once again, some really solid stuff in the China timeline, and I, I did enjoy that ending a lot. So really, the meaty stuff in the present is to do with the computer game itself. So Jin now has access to this headset, and she wants to learn more. She's intrigued. And again, in this very hyper-surreal trippy like level and virtual reality it does bring together some some of the themes that the story is playing with so she goes into level one and she's confronted by like a japanese empire i can't remember i think he was a count yeah he was a count he's very like stern-faced and serious and I do like that there's a few laughs in the computer game stuff because I think you need that. Like uh, other shows or other stories would be like, we're going to take this deadly serious, we're making this really about the ideas. and But it would be very, okay, we're showing you these, these deadly serious characters. And uh, yeah, that would be the tone but i think the tone of this is she's been transported from a different world and she's like okay what the hell is this guy what's going on here so it's her reactions along with just how deadpan he plays it which makes it just gives it a little bit of a laugh even though there's some serious stuff as you go along so he's standing with a young gal who he describes as kind of like a prodigy almost and he describes like a chaotic era I think he calls it and how it's all to do with like things being too dry and the sun being too hot and this is where the environmental themes come in and Jin is told she has to save this era, this this phase, essentially. So you can see what they're doing. They're doing like a computer game style where she has to compete it to move on to the next level and and save this this world. And there's some really like edgy kind of disturbing scenes, even within a very, as I said, stylistic, quite fun like universe because at one point this poor young girl gets melted down by the sun like she's left out in the sun and she literally melts I, I think it's quite a good effect and it looks like she's dead but the commander says no she, or the count sorry says no she's not dead and she tells um it's again it's Jin yeah what what she has to do and eventually what happens is she uses her science to save this world, to save the girl, so she thinks. But that, once again, I think is smart because it's linking up the two 
theme, well, the themes of the show, but also it's linking up the idea of science versus religion, uh, science versus more traditional beliefs, which has been described in the previous episode. And it's a fun little mission because she d- there is a positive outcome. One funny or weird bit which does feel very Game of Thrones, if you're just maybe levering a bit of a complaint, is then you do get a series of like naked people which come running out of a pool at one point when like things are restored and and yeah, they just run out. Like there's men and women, so it's not that it's like super pervy, but it just reminded me of some of the stuff in Game of Thrones. And the girl has been saved, and you have a nice moment, but then there's a twist where things take a turn again because suddenly the climate goes to a more extreme, and it's like frozen, like extreme the other way, and that kills the girl like out of nowhere now again it's a video game is this meant to be literal but in this sort of show it's it's possible it is meant to be literal but at this point i guess it doesn't matter too much because it's a bit of a a gut punch for one of the main characters who i've definitely she was already quite likable compared to some characters in the first episode but she has a strong episode this time around and you did feel for her in the moment where suddenly it seems like she's lost the girl but one thing I thought about is because in the next moment she's told she's completed the level and she must move on to level two and the next level is something to do with you've got to save civilization. So, and she's told you've got to use your science to save civilization. So that's once again going to be the, the next thing. But one thing I thought about this is that it does return to that idea of, well, sure, she's completed the level, she's done what she needed to do, but the girl wasn't saved. Ultimately, the girl did die. So so I, I didn't know if it was poking, like, maybe holes in this, this idea we have, then sometimes you just get the job done, you just do what you need to do, and that's almost like life, that's all you can do. In, in some ways, like, you can't really affect other people, as long as you do your own work, and I, I just thought there might have been an idea to do with that, because that felt a bit like they were saying earlier in the episode with the experiments where yeah yeah, great they they may contact life on other planets but what's the consequence to that so although they're they're wrestling a lot of different things here i I did enjoy how they used the video game element in, in this episode and the laughs i was talking about really mostly came from I almost called him Sam, but I'm I'm going to say it's Jack, isn't it? Because I thought it was Harry <laughs> yesterday. But yeah, Jack is much better in this episode. He's not as annoying. And I think the reason is, be- is because he does feel more like Sam out of Game of Thrones. And that's almost his strong suit. It- it's a bit more Sam, but with... He swears a- quite a lot. I say that and the swearing is entertaining so I'm not complaining but he does feel a bit more like that kind of lovable underdog style character so he starts talking to Lynn and she tells him about what's going on and I like that she's only told him so far then you don't necessarily have to have the whole group finding out straight away so she tells him and he's like, he's just tripping. And it's almost this idea of, well, this is like a video game, but the next level. And 
I, I don't know if the character's meant to be a gamer or not, but he does get a rush off the idea of going into this ra this new realm. And he actually does it, and, and the big gag of the episode is he goes in straight away and he literally gets his head cut off straight away by some woman, some bird as he called, like some bird cut my head off. And there's some choice lines from him. Um, yeah. Yeah, some choice lines, some choice words and reactions. Because the end of the scene is almost even funnier because, like, you don't actually see him... Because he's meant to be almost like a samurai. He's got, like, the clothing on. And, and you don't actually see him go back in. Because he, he does this this line. He It's happened to him twice. He's like, Jack... Or whatever his last, uh, Jack Rooney, yeah, it, it's it's Jack Rooney's revenge. So he's going back in, and you don't actually see him in the other world. He's just got the headset on, and he said he's like, "Oh damn it!" And he's been killed again. And that's the joke because she knows, and he's been killed again. So yeah, that was good stuff. I enjoyed all of that stuff. So it's done a good job of opening up some of the other characters. The other, like, random scene, which is a bit heavy, but I, I I see where it's going, because Jack's best friend, Will, is a character I haven't warmed to yet. I, I know the actor, I, I've, he definitely looks familiar, but there's this odd sort of scene where they're sitting on a bench, like, having, like, sandwiches... And Jack is still on the buzz. Like, he's still excited about this virtual reality. Another thing is, about, like, because it's another gag, is, like, he's saying about how he could literally smell things in the game. So, again, getting across, and it feels, like, more realistic than ever. And there's a joke where, like, Jin is like, oh, you, you were eating poo or eating... <laughs> mud he's like well that's not the point but yeah he's telling all this to will on the park bench and will's not really paying any attention and will's i think like a teacher because you see him in class at some point and you can see that there's like a something that's really bothering him and he just comes out with it and says he has pancreatic cancer and that he only has m months to live and Jack is is obviously taken aback, but he quickly just says, fuck it, like, let's fight it. Let's... And he's talking about things they can do, but Will is like, it's spread too far, and understandably is very down. It's not that it's a bad scene, but I, I just... Where is it going exactly, and does it really have a place? Like, it just fell out of the blue, and... There's no reason yet to really be that invested in it because Will so far has been a bit of a nothing character to me anyway and Jack was better in much better in, in this episode so I'm getting more used to him and enjoying him more but I'll see where it leads is what I'm saying it just felt like a bit of a random scene and it's like okay do we need this storyline was kind of my reaction but yeah that's free body punch episode two so i'm gonna keep going with this because i am intrigued and i thought this was a fun episode with some fun ideas to it as well so yeah let me know your thoughts on this episode in the comments below like and subscribe as always Share me out. You can also support me for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash board now for some extra perks and early access to movie and TV reviews. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>